This is the new Mercedes E-Class. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, just like Audi, Mercedes is now also designing its cars with a photocopier because it looks identical to the C-Class and the S-Class. But then that's no bad thing because they are good looking cars. And anyway, photocopying can be fun as illustrated here with my collection of artwork, which I like to call Xerox Purgatory. Now on the inside, this is less of an upscaled C-Class and more as though the A3 sized S class has been downsized to an A4 sized E class. Now, if you're getting confused, I think I'm talking about Audis. I'm actually talking about paper sizes. And on the whole, it does feel like the S class in here, the, the design with these vents like this, it's very much reminiscent of the S class. And the quality, yeah, it just feels a cut above that of its rivals. A few words of warning, this black shiny trim does scratch easily. Also, if you're buying a four cylinder car, you don't get a 12 inch screen, you get a smaller eight inch screen and with Garmin sat-nav, which feels a little bit aftermarket and just doesn't suit this posh E-Class. Now, if you have a six-cylinder car, you upgrade to the command system, you get this glorious big screen and the definition is lovely. Also, you can upgrade to have digital instruments like in the S-Class and it just, oh, it all looks very nice. And I like the way you can control things just with these touchpads. So it's not buttons, it's actually touchpads there. And you've still got the usual command system down there. So you've got swivel wheel, you've got the touchpad, but on the whole, it's just not as easy to use as the systems you get in a BMW or an Audi. Though you can get it with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and I suggest you use your phone rather than Mercedes command system. And if you want a full review of it, click in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card for more information. And you'll be able to have another look around this car's cabin and you might not be that interested, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Cubby spaces in here are really good. So plenty of places to store a water bottle. And on the whole, it's very spacious. So you get electric seats as standard and you can take them back quite a long way. So even if you're really, really tall, you're gonna be able to get comfy here in the front of the E-Class. And in the back as well, it's impressive. So the E-Class is used in Germany as a taxi, an airport taxi. You see them all over the place. You go to Frankfurt, you go to Munich, you go to Berlin, they're everywhere. And there's a reason for that. And that's because they're very spacious in the back. And this new one, well, there's even more room. So I've got loads of knee room, lots of headroom. These seats are very comfortable. They're slightly reclined, so I feel, well, nice and relaxed here. Now, with all these cars, the middle seat isn't that great, but I think this isn't that bad at all. It's quite narrow, but it's not sat too high, so that when I sit in the middle, I've still got plenty of headroom, and the footwells are big. The transmission tunnel isn't too large. So yeah, on the whole, this is the best car in the back seats in its class. Now, that means it's going to continue to be the favourite with German taxi drivers. And it'll also help that this car has the biggest boot in its class as well. Though not everything about it is great. For instance, the actual shape of the boot means that you can't fit as much stuff in as you'd like. This bit of trim is all flimsy for the, well, the cover for the false floor. And you have to pay extra if you want fold down rear seats which is obscene on a car at this price. You also have to pay extra if you want an automated tailgate, though I wouldn't bother with that. What you should do though is click in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card to see how much stuff we could fit in this car's boot, see how easy it is to fit a child seat in this E-Class and what it's like with three people in the back seats. The new E-Class is available with a range of cool features. Here's five of them. Thanks to Drive Pilot, the car can effectively drive itself. Though occasionally you have to put in a steering input so that it knows that you're still there. Thanks to near-field communication technology, your mobile can double as the car's key so you can open it with your handset. The ambient lighting comes with a choice of 64 different colours. That's more than you used to get with the original Nintendo Entertainment System. The reversing camera is as high definition as I've ever seen on any car. In fact, you could probably count my freckles. You can park the car using a smartphone app or summon it <laughs> to leave it space. But while that's all well and good, there are a few things which let this car down. Entry-level SE cars come with real leather on their seats, whereas the more expensive AMG line cars get fake leather, though it does extend to the dash. These exhaust surrounds are actually fake. The pipe for the diesel engine is actually hidden under there. So lame. Entry-level models don't come with lumbar support as standard, so you might be more comfortable traveling like this. If you want an all-wheel drive version of the diesel E-Class, you have to wait until 2017. On the whole, quality is impeccable. Apart from this cheap bit of plastic here, it's awful. But can the way the new E-Class drives make up for this? Well, that depends on what you're after. If you want a sporty executive saloon, then just get a BMW 5 Series or Jaguar XF. But if comfort is your main priority, then you have come to the right place here with the E-Class because it's so relaxing to drive. 
Now, I'm not saying that this thing is going to fall off the road when you encounter a corner. It's actually very grippy, but it's definitely set up with comfort as its main objective, and it fulfills that brief very, very well. So, as standard, the suspension is nice and supple, but then you can upgrade it for optional air suspension if you want to feel like you're traveling on a nice big fluffy cloud. It's really quiet in here as well, so really, really good soundproofing. You've got the best aerodynamic shape body in its class, so there's absolutely no wind whistle. Just get a bit of tire roar, and that's it. This thing, oh, it's like just hanging out in a spa, really. All I really need now is, is the whale music. In terms of engines, you're going to be able to get hybrid power, petrol power, and of course, diesel power. And most people will lust after the six cylinder in the 350D, but it's hard to justify its extra price over this two litre diesel in this car because, well, it's a new engine. It's a lot quieter and smoother than the old 2.1. And in this 220D, I've got almost 200 horsepower, 0 to 60 is a little over seven seconds. Mercedes says it will return 72 miles per gallon, and I'm looking down at the trip computer, and I'm getting 55 miles per gallon. So the automatic gearbox, it's got nine speeds, which is more than I've got fingers. And while it's never found wanting of which gear it should be in, it manages to do the maths and pick the right ratio at the right time. Overall, I find this E-Class just dead easy to drive. And you seem to see a little bit higher than in rival cars, and that gives you a good view out. And you can see for yourself by clicking the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card to watch our 360-degree video. So then, overall, what do I think of the Mercedes E-Class? Well, it lacks any kind of fun factor, and it's more expensive than its rivals but it's super luxurious and really relaxing to drive. Now, if you click in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on an E-Class at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Click over there for our group test video between the Mercedes E-Class, the Audi A6, and the BMW 5 Series. And if you like this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in the video? It was the Janis Joplin song on the stereo.